Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the ShredderGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. With any luck, you're having an amazing day, and we're going to be kicking this video off with news of the RX 5600. According to Igor's lab, the RX 5600 graphics card will launch in the early part of next year. It's looking like it's going to be January. Of course, we've already seen multiple shipping entries for engineering sample GPUs in the RX 5600 series, so this is just further confirmation that, of course, AMD are working on it. At the very least, we're going to see some type of reveal at CES. So, what of the specifications of the RX 5600? Well, shockingly in all, it fits between the RX 5500 and the RX 5700. According to Igor, it looks like it's using a cut-down Narve 10 die. This actually tells up nicely with my predictions. I kind of guessed that AMD would simply reuse Narve 10 dies, which didn't quite make the uh, yields for the RX 5700 vanilla. Allegedly, we're going to see the die cut down by 25%. So essentially, we would have a grand total of 30 compute units, which would be enabled, and a 192-bit memory bus. This would also mean that we have 6 gigabytes of VRAM as well. I mean, technically, they could use uh, 12 gigabytes on the GPU, but let's face it, it would make absolutely no sense for them to do so. So, apparently, according to Igor, the RX 5500 is not selling as well as AMD had hoped, which isn't really surprising given the performance of the GPU. Now, before anyone jumps on me in the comments, I'm not saying it's a bad card, I just feel that it's overpriced by around the 30 to 40 US dollar mark. If it had been, let's say, 30 bucks cheaper, it would have been a really tantalizing option. As it is at the moment, it's okay, but it doesn't really set the world alight, particularly given how late it is to the party. Either way, though, another GPU uh, available in the market is only a good thing. Naturally, the RX 5600 is still using the first generation of RDNA. And I've been doing a little bit of digging around as I'm preparing a couple of analysis videos at the moment for the next generation consoles. I'm hearing that the second generation of RDNA, which would be Narve 2X, is actually much more efficient than the first generation of Narve. Now, to clarify here, I do not mean because of the uh, 7nm plus process or anything like that. I am actually referring to the architecture itself. I'm uncertain, though, at the moment, what the architectural changes are. I know, of course, that it has the ray tracing capabilities uh, that have been touted recently. We've seen, obviously, the hybrid ray tracing patterns. Obviously, we were the first to break that the second generation of Narve would have ray tracing capabilities. According to another one of my sources, Narve 23 is going to be, quote, the NVIDIA killer, end quote. And ultimately, it comes down to efficiency. Turing say what you want about it, but given that NVIDIA are still using the 12nm process, it is incredibly efficient. And all of this comes down to architectural uh, design from NVIDIA themselves. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens with Ampere there, particularly moving to the 7nm process. I'm hearing that uh, Ampere, and this is from several people, Ampere is going to drastically improve ray tracing performance, but also improve rasterization performance, typical rasterization performance a little bit. Or should I say GeForce 30, because it's still up in the air yet, whether it is uh, called Ampere for the uh, desktop GPUs. But either way, I'm hearing that the RTX 30 series of cards is going to drastically improve ray tracing, and allegedly it's one of the top priorities for from uh, NVIDIA. But moving back to AMD, the next generation of uh, AMD cards is going to be incredibly important for the company. Not only because at the moment uh, NVIDIA kind of have the run of the place when it comes to the high end, but the next generation consoles, which of course launch uh, end of next year, is also going to put a lot of pressure in the desktop space. After all, let's say you have a PlayStation 5. Let's just take the PS5 for a moment. And say that it costs 400 US dollars, four to 500 US dollars. Let's just say for the sake of this video, 400 bucks. It's going to be a really nice option for a lot of people who 
kind of are getting a bit sick and tired of spending three, four, five, six hundred dollars plus on a graphics card. So either way, I'm really fascinated to see what the next several months in graphics holds. As we all know, Intel are working on their discrete GPUs, which are also going to launch next year. Recently, there has been a post on Reddit which claims that they've heard information from insiders that Intel's DG1 is not shaping up as well as Intel had hoped. Basically, they can't meet the power budgets of 25 watts and the performance isn't quite up to snuff. Well, I have to say that it's quite interesting the timing, hint, hint, uh, as Chris Perillo over at the Intel graphics team has recently put out a video where he basically says that the DG1 GPU from Intel is on schedule and it's not facing any delays and we should hear something more soon. He also hints that the performance targets of the card are right on, well, target. I kind of painted myself in a corner there, didn't I? Anyway, I... I'm pretty sure that that's not a quinky dink, the fact that he uh, tweeted that video. And let's face it, it's also quite interesting, uh, his wording. Now, do I think that Intel's DG1 is going to revolutionise graphics? No. I'm hearing multiple times now that we are only going to be looking at a GPU, which is the lower end performance. And obviously a 25 watt TDP kind of gives you an indicator of that. We've also, of course, seen the infamous driver entries, which shows that at the top end, one of these GPUs only has 128 EU uh, execution units. So, naturally speaking, this is not going to be a card which is going to run, let's say, the uh, latest AAA titles at 4K. Instead, it's a GPU which is aimed to be cheap and basically cut Intel's teeth in the discrete GPU market. Now, I do want to discuss with you, however, Intel's DG2. But I will say that I am less confident in this information than normal. The reason behind that is because I'm receiving so much conflicting information, for example, in even the performance targets of the GPU. But given that we are discussing Intel's XE graphics cards, I figure I might as well throw it in here. However, I would caution you to take this information with a massive truckload of salt. So first of all, DG2 is going to be the high performance tier in the uh, Intel XD lineup, as the name would imply. Of course, we've seen various driver entries which also indicate that it has a higher number of execution units. Now, this GPU is not Ponte Vico. From my understanding, it's still based on the 10NM process, but is going to be aimed at the gaming market and, of course, launch later next year. Now, furthermore, I have been told by a couple of so sources the performance targets of this graphics card. The problem is, all of them are telling me slightly different things. But from what I can ascertain from several people now, the performance targets are somewhere between the RTX 2070 and maybe up to the RTX 2080. I will say, however, more people have agreed it's closer to the RTX 2070 in performance compared to the RTX 2080. Now, I will admit... On the face of it, given how late these GPUs will launch, a card which is roughly, let's say, the RTX 2070, let's just pin it down and say that's the performance target, may not be super impressive, but there are a couple of things we need to take into consideration. The first is that it is Intel's first uh, foray into discrete graphics. Well, of course, they've tried things like Larrabee, but, well, we all know about Larrabee and how successful it was. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, the fact that it is really their first foray into discrete graphics is something that we need to take into consideration. Furthermore, Ponte Vico is not the same architecture. It is a later architecture. What is more ambiguous, however, is exactly how the architecture has changed and evolved. I do know for certain that Ponte Vico is different, and I will speak about Ponte Vico more in a moment, but I don't know for certain how much different it is. The other thing is that apparently Intel are going to be selling this GPU as cheap as humanly possible. I don't know exactly what the price is, of course, because Intel themselves probably don't have that information yet. But apparently they really want to get into the market. I am, however, hearing that Intel are not looking to go through an AIB partner. Instead, at the moment, they are just going to release the graphics cards themselves. Perhaps later on this may change. Perhaps later on they will partner with companies like Zotac, MSI, Gigabyte, bloody bloody blah blah, 
but allegedly at the moment that's not the plan and they're just looking to basically release it how they would their let's say ssds or their um i don't know cpus or what have you so what about ponte vico then at the moment, allegedly, much of the internal focus is aimed at the high-performance computing slash AI. And this colors up nicely to what we've seen with Raj Akhodori. After all, most of his focus at the moment, from what I understand anyway, is actually on the one API rather than anything else. Intel are facing an awful lot of pain at the moment on the CPU front. However, I do try to think of Intel not as a CPU company anymore, but a company with its fingers in a lot of different pies. Ironically, AMD are ahead of them in many ways, with their GPU business, which, yes, has also had its fair share of problems, but I do feel AMD are on the right track. Intel, though, they've got SSDs down, they've got networking, and slowly, 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 creeping into the discrete GPU business, but ironically enough, their CPUs are now the thing that are suffering, considering that most people just associate Intel with CPUs. Nevertheless, I think in a couple of years' time, Intel will probably bounce back with a stronger-than-ever uh, ecosystem. I think in the short term, though, Comet Lake is not going to be able to compete with the Ryzen 3000, let alone the Ryzen 4000, if what I've uh, been hearing regarding the IPC and other in performance enhancements have been accurate. As for Rocket Lake, well, allegedly it's going to be a backport, of course, of Willow Cove, which, in theory anyway, will mean quite a large jump in IPC compared to the uh, venerable old guard. Anyway, hopefully you will stick with us here at Red Gaming Tech to see how it all unfolds, as I have a feeling that it's going to be nothing short of extremely interesting. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Bye for now.